All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tobacco Online Policy Seminar, or TOPS. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Caitlin Rahm. I'm an assistant professor at the TSET Health Promotion Research Center and Department of Pediatrics at University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. TOPS is organized by Mike Pesco at University of Missouri, C. Shang at the Oklahoma State University, and Michael Darden at Johns Hopkins University, as well as Jamie Hartman Boyce at University of Massachusetts Amherst. The seminar will be one hour with questions from the moderator and discussant, and the audience may post questions and comments in the Q&A panel, and the moderator will draw from these questions and comments in conversation with the presenter. Please be sure to review the guidelines on tobaccopolicy.org for acceptable questions. Please keep the questions professional and related to the research being discussed. And questions that meet the seminar series guidelines will be shared with the presenter afterwards, even if they're not read aloud. And your questions are very much appreciated. The presentation today is being video recorded and will be made available along with the presentation slides on the TOPS website, tobaccopolicy.org. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the presentation over to today's moderator, Jamie Hartman Boyce from the University of Massachusetts Amherst to introduce our speaker. Hi, I'm Michael Pesco, and I'm filling in for Jamie Hartman Boyce today. Uh, today, we continue our spring, winter spring 2024 season with a single paper presentation by Ian Jung entitled Comprehensive Smoke Free Policies and Smoking in South Korea. This presentation was selected via a competitive review process by submitting through the TOPS website. Ian Jung is a fourth year PhD student in the Department of Economics at Georgia State University. His research interests lie in experimental economics, health economics, and economic education. He is particularly interested in studying individual decision-making and collective actions using experimental methods. Among other things, he is currently evaluating the effectiveness of comprehensive smoke-free policies in South Korea using synthetic control methods. He is also involved in randomized control trials of chatbots in academic courses. Our discussant today is Kevin Callison, an associate professor in the Department of Health Policy and Management at Tulane University. Ian, thank you for presenting for us today. Um, thank you. Um, hi. Uh, thanks for attending the top seminar, and thanks for all the organizers at Tobacco Online Policy Seminar for having me to present my work. And my name is um, Ian Jung and I'm a fourth year student at Department of Economics and Georgia State University. And today I'm going to present my work, Comprehensive Smoke-Free Policies and Smoking in South Korea. And this is still ongoing project. So any comments and questions will be appreciated. Just um, for the briefing about my paper, Smoke-Free Policies, is that Comprehensive smoke free policies was implemented in South Korea in 2011 nationally and simultaneously. And this caused smokers a lot of, incurred a lot of cost, both in physical cost and mental cost. Physical cost is like um, finding a smoking places and mental cost is something like, um, because of the changes known from the people, they have to incur, they have to, the people are looking at smoking in different ways. So they have mental costs whenever they smoke. So this um, will affect in like smoking prevalence in South Korea. So this study will be some type of stigma type constraints that how much effect that having the smoking prevalence in South Korea. Ian, could you um, make your um, slideshow in um, percent mode? Perfect, thank you. Yep, and this work is not supported by any funding and the author has received no tobacco related funding over the past 10 years. So smoking is um, really a serious problem around the world and especially smoking is a major concern in South Korea because approximately 58,000 people experience premature deaths related to smoking each year. And all 
et al. 2012 paper estimated the total economic cost of smoking related cancers reached 3 billion in 2008. And this is a huge amount. And also, if we are looking at comparing the other OECD countries, smoking prevalence in 2009, South Korea is eighth highest smoking rates among population aged 15 and over in 2009. So it was really a serious problem back in um, 2000 and 2000. So for some background for the smoking policies in South Korea, um, from 1995, government started to notice that the tobacco is um, really a serious problem in South Korea. So they enacted the National Health Promotion Act that began a partial smoke-free policies. By what it means by partial smoking-free policies is that they have a um, smoking zone inside the buildings designated smoking zone, but they were kind of open air, so they did not have to be a closed or any isolated area, but it just had to be a smoking zone, like divided by smoking zone and non-smoking zone, but it still have smoking, the cigarette smokes floating around everywhere in the buildings. And in 2005, there was a price increase by 25% from 180 to 230 30s. Um, so South Korea has this cigarette policy fixed prices for the cigarette price policies that is fixed by government. Um, it was at 180 before 2005, but it increased by 25% government decided to increase the price by to 230 after 2005 and it was fixed until 2015 again and 2010 local government gained authority to regulate outdoor smoking bans but it was actively implemented after 2011 and in 2011 when where my estimate is looking is comprehensive smoking free policy. So by 2011 now, we in Korea, it is regulated to smoke inside the building or if you are inside the building, you have to build, you have to smoke in the designated smoking area that is totally isolated now from the non-smoking zones. So now it is totally smoke. The secondhand smoking is now totally protected. And this comprehensive smoking free policy extended to first started with pu public transport, government buildings, medical facilities, nurseries, schools, large restaurants and bars, and large buildings and theaters. And first it was implemented in the larger buildings and later, 2018, expanded to indoor spaces larger than 150 meters square. And in 2015, the comprehensive expansion to all indoor spaces. And also in 2015, the price increased by 80%, and it went to 4 30 and 10 cents. And 2016, December, the government mandated the pictorial warning labels for the cigarette packages. And this is um, short background about tobacco control policies from 1995 to 2016. And as you can see, nine, in 1995, smoking prevalence in South Korea was 37% and it kept after the implementation of those tobacco policies, um, 
it decreased to 21% in 2020. But as you can see in here, 2005, they increased the price. So it has a dramatic dec decrease in 2005. And after that, it has um, stagnated after the price increase and government realized that some um, serious tobacco control policies should be implemented. So in 2011, everything happened. And after 2015, it the price increased again and pictorial warning labels, such other tobacco control policies was implemented. So my estimate is looking at 2011, Mark and I am cutting out at 2015 because of other policies I implemented after that. So my over overview of my research is the to plausibly and causally estimate the treatment effect of nation, national and simultaneous policy, which was comprehensive smoking free policy and the effect in reducing the smoking rates. Data I'm using is the international smoking statistics and Korean National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey and World Health Organization tobacco use data for the um, various smoking prevalence rates for the other countries and world development indicator data for the national indicators. And my data is from 1995 to 2015 to clearly see what is going on with the comprehensive smoking free policy. The preview of my results says the Korean comprehensive smoking free policy reduced smoking prevalence by an average of 2.3 percentage points from 27.1% of smoking rate in 2011. So that is the 8.5% reduction overall. Um, so for the Korea um, smoking policy literature says most of studies are pre post analysis, not causal studies, especially in comprehensive smoking free policies, because it was national and simultaneous um, policy. It was it is hard to causally estimate the effect, but they some of the studies this pre and post analysis to have conclusion about indoor air quality in bars. So it was comprehensive smoking free policy improved the indoor air quality and reduced secondhand smoking. And also it increased awareness of the smoke, secondhand smoking and increased support for expanding smoke free areas. And it also decreased in adolescent smoking for both boys and girls. So it has some effect on um, social norms, which will affect in smokers in mental cost. And this will affect in reduced um, prevalence of smoking in Korea. And one study called causally estimated the effect of outdoor smoking ban, which happened in the similar time of comprehensive smoking free policy but Cole found no effect on reducing smoking prevalence, but it increased the quit attempt. I assume that the older effect of reduced smoking would be observed by the smoke-free policy that happened in the similar timing of this outdoor smoking plant. And other evidences from other countries is that several causal studies have shown that smoke-free law or indoor air law reduced smoking prevalence in US, Carlton et al. found the comprehensive indoor bans associated with 2.3% to 3.3% average reduction. In Switzerland, they found 1% reduction. In Germany, um, 
they found they reduced smoking behavior of people who go out to bars often, but no change in average smoking rate. So the empirical evidence regarding the effectiveness of comprehensive indoor smoking bans and reducing smoking prevalence is, I would say, mixed. So my research question is here to plausibly estimate how effective was the comprehensive smoking free policy, which is non price policy, in reducing the smoking rates in South Korea, using the synthetic control method to causally estimate the treatment effect for nationally and simultaneous policy. The contribution of this study would be this study uses synthetic control methods, so it will contribute to the applied synthetic control method to estimate the effect of nationally wide and simultaneously implemented policy. In this case, it's South Korea. And our study contributes to the current literature on non price tobacco control policies and Korean tobacco control policy. And hand collected country level panel data on smoking prevalence might be handy for the future research. Um, talking about the data, my um, data consists of the 28 OECD countries from 1995 to 2015. So one of the variable import, the key variable is smoking prevalence for the 28 countries. I use international smoking statistics and Korean National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey for the Korea uh, smoking rates and World Health Organization tobacco use data for, I use international smoking statistics and World Health Organization tobacco use data to, um, <clears throat> to build the smoking rates for other countries. And national indicators, I use the world development indicators provided by World Bank. Um, so I would like to pause here for the question and answer questions. Is there any yep. question? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ian, um, very much for getting this started. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our discussion today, Kevin Callison from Tulane University to see if he has any discussion, comments, questions. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ian. Um, I, I don't think I have a lot to add at this point, but but I will. There, there were two things that sort of struck me as I was reading the paper, and you were uh, going through the the institutional details of the the changes here. One is that um, that you know this was a really a really substantial package of policy changes that all occurred within a pretty short period of time here. So we've got just to kind of to recap what Ian covered. We've got a really really large relative tax increase. We've got pictorial labels on the, the cigarette packages. Um, we've got smoke-free air laws. So this is really this, this large bundle of policy interventions aimed at reducing smoking. And I think for me, it's, it's interesting to consider this because you know working in the US, we're often estimating effects of really sort of marginal changes. So you know maybe a, a, a 25 cent increase in the cigarette tax here or there or maybe a smoke-free air law in you know, a certain state's bars or restaurants. But it's, so I think this is a really interesting setting because we have this, this large bundle of packages happening. And, and the other thing I wanted to, to raise as I was, as I was um, you know, thinking through the paper, and I'll come back to this maybe after we talk about the results, but Ian mentioned the, the smoking rates in South Korea. And I think one of the things he highlights in the paper is that you know there's this really large disparity in smoking rates between men and women in South Korea, and so um, you know something like on the order of maybe four to five times higher smoking rates among men than women, and so that was something that really interested me about this setting and case study as well. And I think something that maybe we we could return to when we're thinking about how to interpret the impacts uh, of this policy. So I'll stop there. I think Ian did a good job of of describing the setting, and and I'm interested to see the the methods and the results. Uh, I think, uh, Kevin, um, Ian, if, if I may, I have one question. Um, in uh, yeah. audience members, please add your uh, questions to the Q&A panel um, uh, and we will uh, ask them to uh, Ian uh, when we can. Um, but uh, I find that this uh, panel that you've created to be very interesting, right? Um, 
And, um, and so it sounds like you're using two different data sources to create a panel of uh, country specific smoking rates for these, these other countries. Um, did, uh, did, did, were, did different data sets uh, provide information for the same country or um, um, like did, was there a time horizon over which you could, you could get these smoking rates? How regularly did you get the smoking rates? Can you just tell us a little bit more about the panel that you've created? Okay, um, for the T, the T radiance is the smoking prevalence, and I build this mostly depending on, on the international smoking statistics. Um, but some of the countries collect smoking prevalence data in every two to three years. So that has uh, some of the missing data points. So I assume that linear trend between the missing data points for those missing um, smoking rates. But if I couldn't find any smoking, um, consistent smoking rates in international smoking statistics, I use the World Health Organization tobacco use data to supplement my um, data. And for the, mostly for the Korean, Smoking rates, I use the Korean National Health Institution Examination Survey. So for a given country, you didn't um, intermix sources, then you kept just the same, only used one source per country then? Yes, that's right. Okay, okay, great. Um, a question has come up here. Um, do the uh, KN hands data include smoking of black market cigarettes? How much impact had these regulations on the growth of a black market? Um, it does not include the black market. Um, the sales of the cigarettes, but I know that this K enhanced data has a um, data on cigarette sales and smoking prevalence, but it does not have the black market the data for the black market. Thank you. Okay, Ian, please continue with your presentation. So I'll continue with the method. So what I'm using here is a synthetic control method. Um, and the reason why I am using synthetic control method is that using a difference in differences is not valid in our case. So I plotted the past plot of smoking prevalence during 1995 to 2020 with South Korea in the real, that real line versus OECD average of 27 donor countries in the dotted line. And we can easily see that this free trend does not have the parallel trend, that does not meet the assumption of parallel trend assumption. So difference and difference is not valid in our case. So what I found for the next best uh, method is the synthetic control method, but we can, I referenced it about the 2021 and about the at all 2010, which they estimated the California cigarette um, control tobacco, tobacco control policies effect in the um, smoking rates in California. And I referenced that to use in my study. So uh, briefly talking about the synthetic control method is that synthetic control method begins from the synthetic synthesizing the control unit by finding the weights that has this, this one is the treated unit and T represent the time for the uh, time and J represents the other countries that we are using to replicate or synthesizing the control unit for our treated unit. And this is by looking at the some of the outcomes that is in the other countries and weighted by um, W. 
And how the weights are chosen is that this W vector of W is chosen by minimize, minimizing the root mean squared prediction error that has in the pre trend. And for the predictors that I've chosen, and they will have, they will find the W that will minimize this um, prediction error. And so the treatment effects are estimated as further. So tau 1t is the treatment effect and is equal to the actual outcome of our actual treated unit minus the estimated synthesized control unit's outcome in the post period. So the synthetic control unit is synthesized by finding the weights and the weights are chosen that minimize the mean squared prediction error for the predictors in the pre-intervention period. And the treatment effects are estimated by taking simple difference of outcomes between the traded units and synthesized control unit in the post-intervention period. And this is how we estimate the treatment effect in synthetic control method. And one limitation is this synthetic control method is that in W, in the original model, they do not allow for the negative weight, which means that it will not allow for extrapolation. And this means that synthetic control unit methods are not good for synthesizing like outliers, very top or very bottom. But luckily in my case, um, this real line in the middle is the, the smoking rate for the South Korea, which is um, positioned in the middle. So this is not, but this limitation does not apply in our case. And the donor pool that will be building our control unit is from the 38 OECD countries, I excluded the 10 countries there because there is not no consistent data on the smoking prevalence and such countries were Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Mexico, Slovak Republic, and Slovenia and Turkey. And our treated unit is South Korea and donor pool to synthesize the control unit is 28, 27 countries that is excluded from excluding these 10 countries. The predictors I'm using here is the outcomes of smoking rate in 2000 and smoking rate in 2006 and smoking rate in 2010. And covariates I'm using here is log of GDP per capita and proportion of population age 20 to 29 and proportion of agricultural and forestry and fishery and the alcohol consumption per capita for my estimate. So I'm um, looking at the descriptive statistics for the real Korea and the synthesized control units, um, the log of per GDP per log GDP per capita and industry, agricultural, forestry, and fishery, and also alcohol consumption per capita, smoking rate 2000, 2006, 2010 looks really similar, except for one that is percentage, the population of age. 20 and 29, and real it in this case the real Korea has um, slightly higher proportion, which means that it has um, younger age in real South Korea than the control unit. Um, this is the composition of synthetic Korea, the weights.
And if we are looking at rates, Austria has 10%, Czech Republic is 28%, Greece, Ireland, Iceland, Israel is receiving 16 to 17, and Israel is receiving 12% of the rates. Um, this is how my um, synthetic Korea is built. And I would like to pause here for the any questions. Okay, thank you, Ian. Um, I'll turn it over to discussion, Kevin Callison. Thanks, Ian. Um, I, I did have a, a couple of questions for you when you get to the results of the, um, the synthetic control. So maybe I will hold off there. Um, I, I had another question though about the, the predictors in the model. And I think this echoes a question that came up in the, the Q and A. I know in your paper, you talk a bit about the substitution to e-cigarettes. And I think, um, you know, something that I, I was considering as you were presenting this is how should we, you know, should we be concerned that maybe some of the changes we're seeing in the trends um, might be due to the substitution in e-cigarettes and how would, how would the synthetic control measure or uh, method capture something like that? Um, synthetic control methods, since we are just looking at the um, current cigarette prevalence, uh, smoking prevalence in each country and each time, um, if some countries have early adoption of e-cigarettes, then it will um, it will have less of a smoking rates detected, and it will it will be biased um, bit, um, overestimating the effect of the our policies. But um, as long as um, the South, as, as for the South Korea, I have a appendix for the heated tobacco products and the some of the e-cigarette concerns. For the heated tobacco products, it, it is introduced in 2017 in second quarter, so, um, it does it does not affect our estimates at all for the heated tobacco products and some of the electronic nicotine delivery system would affect our results because it, in 2013 to 15 it is increasing trend and from 0.9% to 2.6% but however if we consider that most of the first initial e-cigarette users was um, the dual user between the conventional cigarettes and e-cigarettes, and really high rates of e-cigarette users was also consuming e-cigarettes as old as it was. So if we are just looking at smoking prevalence, it would not affect that much in our um uh post period that I'm estimating the effect. Does that answer the question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um thank you, Kevin. Um not seeing uh, any other uh, QA, so go ahead, Ian, and continue with your presentation. Okay. Um so I'll continue with uh, main digits that I am having here is the first figure shows the plot path of smoking prevalence between real Korea in a real line and uh, synthetic Korea with the dashed line. And we can see that it um, has really good fit in the pre-trend. And we we can see that divergence happens after 2011 that our um, the intervention period in here. So if you are averaging out the, if you are looking at the gap between these 
um, synthetic chorea and the real chorea with the smoking rates, we can see in the right-hand side here, and after 2011, we see a large decrease in the gap. So it shows um, our policy, the comprehensive smoking-free policy was effective in reducing the smoke smoking rate. And our estimate is taking the mean from 2011 to 2015, and our average treatment effect says minus 2.3117 with a standard deviation in 0.6275, which means that it effectively reduced the smoking rates by 2.3117 percentage point from the reference point of 27.1%. Um, this is the placebo test. Um, I did the placebo test for the in time and in space placebo test. And also I did some of, I did other, I used the other estimate, which is the augmented, augmented synthetic control method which is the newer version and have relaxed um, some of the limitation of the original synthetic control method to see if that gives any difference. And the first one is placebo test for the end time. So this one I use, I treated the units in different time. And because it is implemented in the placebo implementation was introduced in um, random times, 2005 and 2008, and this should not have any effect on our estimates. And we find that this placebo treatment does not result in a post-placebo treatment divergence in a trajectory of smoking prevalence between South Korea and synthetic control unit. So this looks good. And also I did the in-place uh, placebo test, which I implemented those placebo treatment to our different units in our donor pool. And the um, left-hand panel shows all 27 countries and with the gaps between the real smoking prevalence minus the synthetic control unit for each of them. And we can see that the real line is South Korea. And we can see that out of 27 countries, this South Korea has the um, most gap or most effect. And countries that have root mean square prediction error larger than 1.25 are excluded to form the right panel. So we can see more clearly. And the p-value of estimating a gap of this big magnitude would be, we can say one out of 28. And that is equal to 0 0.036 in our case. And this is the augmented synthetic control method that I was talked about. This is the newer method for the synthetic control um, literature. And if you remember that original synthetic control method did not allow for the negative rates for the finding the W vectors, but in this augmented synthetic control method, they relaxed this um, limitation. So some countries could have negative weights to build a synthetic control. And this will have more um, higher fit for the pretrend. And it will have more um, precise estimates for the, um, for the treatment effect. And we see no difference between um, 
estimated every treatment effect from our synthetic control model and this. So I would um, say our result is robust to the uh, more newer method in synthetic control literature. So the conclusion for my research paper is the considering tobacco control policy implementation and the increase in cigarette prices in other countries, the estimated effects is the lower bound estimate and the comprehensive smoking free policy in Korea significantly reduces the smoking prevalence by an average of 2.3 percentage point from the 27.1% smoking rate in 2011. And this represents an 8.5% reduction when compared to a scenario without the policy. And this is robust placebo test and using augmented synthetic control method. And in other words, the comprehensive smoke-free policy deterred approximately 1.2 million people from smoking either by encouraging smokers to quit or preventing the initiation from the new smokers. Um, this is all I have for the, today's presentation. And I'd like to have um, questions and comments. Okay, thank you, Ian, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, we will turn it over to the discussant. Yeah, thanks, Ian. I, I appreciate the presentation. And I, I just have a couple of um, questions or, or um, points that I, that I think could be helpful to readers as we're you know, reading through the paper, trying to understand exactly what's, what's happening with this. So as someone who's probably not as um, up to date as I should be on synthetic control methods and maybe not understanding exactly what's going on under the hood with, with some of those methods, what struck me about your results was that um, that gap where you're identifying the effect, the, the effect seems to come off of a change in the trend of the slope for the, for the synthetic South Korea. So more or less, if I'm looking at the, the pictures of your synthetic control model, I see a relatively continuous declining trend for the, the real Korea. And then I, I see the, the synthetic Korea follow the same trend in the pre-period. But then the slope of that line seems to level off after the, you know, after 2011. And so I'm just curious about the synthetic control method and whether you could maybe provide any additional insight into what it means when the effect is really being driven by this sort of change in the trend in the synthetic group, as opposed to a really noticeable change in the trend for the, the real Korea. Um, <clears throat> I think um, the changes in trend comes from, um, so I see what you are saying here, the synthetic control unit is slightly going up and the trend keeps downward for the real Korea. And my, my um, conjecture is that because of the pre-trend for the South Korea was kind of flat in last 10, last five years of treatment period. This might be why the synthetic control Korea was slightly upward trending because this the they assume the um the similar trend as this pre near five years pre-trend and this affected a lot for the control units rather than actual unit here. And that that is my only conjecture for the why it is from why it is more flatter. I see. I wonder if in in again, I, I I'm not certainly not an expert in synthetic control. So this this may not be a great suggestion, but I, I know you're matching on smoking rates in 2010 as well, right? And I I wonder if there might be some falsification or sensitivity analysis where it might be good to maybe not match on the 20. I don't know if there's any policy anticipation or if, if that 
that covariate that you're matching on could potentially be driving some of this change in the slope of the control grid. But it might be interesting to see what that looks like um, in that case. I see. The other the other point I wanted to return to um, is this this difference in smoking rates for men and women. And I, I really think it would be helpful. And I don't know if the data preclude you from doing a separate analysis for, for men and women, but I think um, it would really help us get a better understanding of the impact of the policies that you're studying. Um, you know, one of the things that struck me is when you're when you're talking about numbers like an eight and a half percent reduction in smoking, it seems like a pretty large reduction um, given what we've seen of estimates, you know, in other places associated with indoor smoking bans and those sorts of things. But then if I think that that reduction might primarily be coming among, say, men, for example, because they're by far the heaviest group of smokers, you know, then, then we're talking about a 2.3 percentage point reduction off of a mean of 40 plus percent in the in the baseline period, you know, which is a much smaller relative change. So I just think it would be really helpful if, if there is a way for you to, um, you know, provide estimates by sex, I think that could be really enlightening as to who exactly is being impacted by these policies. You see. Yeah. Thank well, you I for think, the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to turn it over to Mike for questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Kevin. Um, a number of questions, uh, Ian, in the Q&A panel, and others feel free to add your questions as well, if you would like. Um, a question, why stop in 2015? Could you estimate your treatment effect until 2015, then estimate treatment effect after 2015 when the tax policy happened? So you have both effect of smoke-free policy and effect of smoke-free policy plus tax increase. Um, I see. Um, I For this um, study of this paper, I only looked at the, I want to look at look first at the higher uh, comprehensive smoke free policy first. But then, if I am looking only at comprehensive smoke free policy, I want to restrict my sample to 2015. But I see what you what you mean, and I could expand this research on the. Um, on the estimating um, 2015's price increase as well in the later research. Okay. Um, uh, another question. Um, as you indicated, HTP were introduced in 2017. You can see there is an accelerated reduction of cigarette prevalence in South Korea after 2017 on top of introduction of new generation of nicotine vaping products in 2019. And a related question slash comment, Korea was the testing market of HTPs and new generation of nicotine vaping products. Too much credit was given to smoke-free, which is not yet comprehensive now. Any reactions to that? Uh, <clears throat> yes, um, I agree that Korea was testing market for heated tobacco products and um, new generation of vaping um <clears throat> um I haven't looked at how much it reduced the like smoking rates um directly, but um if I remember correctly of the how um the social norm was changing was most of the older people were changing into heated tobacco product because of concerns for the families or kids, their kids. And also it is much harder to find the um, tobacco like smoking places. So they, a lot of people um, after the price increase of the cigarettes of 80% in 2015, a lot of people considered switching into the e-cigarettes. Uh, that would be okay. okay. Thank you, Ian. And um, is it it's true? Like the um the 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 products on the market too that it, that might be endogenously responding to 
the policies, right? And and maybe they is it possible that heated tobacco products were introduced in South Korea precisely because there was that comprehensive indoor smoking ban um, uh, as a providing an option around that policy? Um, no, no, no. Um, the smoking comprehensive smoke free policies still apply to the okay. e-cigarettes and the heated tobacco products. So people still smokers has still has to find a place smoking zone or smoking place to smoke those products, other products as well. Okay. Um. Um. And uh, you can continue the conversation offline with um with the uh the individual um that uh making making these comments. So thank you for thank you for the discussion. Um, is there anything? If does anybody else have any other questions, comments? We have a few more minutes. Okay, I am otherwise going to turn it over to our MC to take us out the door. Alrighty, so we're about out of time here. Um, if you have any burning questions or thoughts for Anne, you can join us for the Top of the Tops, an interactive group discussion offered immediately after uh, Select Tops events this season. So to join, you can copy the Zoom meeting URL that was posted in the chat just a bit ago and switch rooms. Oh, there it is again. And switch rooms with us once the event concludes. We'll go ahead and leave this room open for another minute or so to give you all a chance to copy the URL, it's bit.ly forward slash tops meeting. And thank you to our presenter, moderator, and discussant, and to our audience of 151 people for your participation. Hope everybody has a tops notch weekend. Bye, everyone.